Yep. Getting in the water today was real easy. You guys have seen this boat before on my channel. Today, we're gonna rig it up and we're gonna take it out on the water. Well, the rigging is gonna take place here at the old homestead. And although it's been spring, the trees make it feel almost like fall here in Florida lately. So fortunately, I had a 12-foot catch cover. This is a Pelican product that's covering a wilderness boat. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Anyways, uh, the boat was still rigged up from the first time I had had it on the water. And although it was kind of rigged up for fishing, I really just kind of slapped it together. So today I wanted to do a more thorough job rigging it up. One way I could do that is to add some more Scotty mounts like you see here, but I wanted to add it using a low profile track. This was gonna sit right in front of me, so I didn't want it sitting up too proud and in the way. But as you can see, these holes don't exactly line up. Not a problem, I went out to the truck, which is kind of like my mobile workshop, and right there on the tailgate, I pulled out some of the Plano boxes that I have full of hardware, and I was able to find a screw that went through one piece of starboard, but not two. That was pivotal. So I screwed them both together, and then I brought them inside to sand it down and make it like one piece. After that, you could hardly see the seam in between the two. Take the screws apart, clean up the flashing that the sander makes, and open it up to reveal one had holes going all the way through and one did not. So I took one of those screws and I found a drill bit that was the same size as the head. I put the drill in reverse and I reamed out the hole right where the head of the screw was going to be. These are bolts actually, but you can see what I'm talking about. The head is buried in that first piece of starboard. So I proceeded to do the other three and then I snapped it back together. Now we could put that track on there and the bolts wouldn't interfere with the screws. They may make an adapter like this, I'm not sure, but I didn't really know where I could buy one, and heck, using the starboard I had laying around, I just went ahead and made one. It's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it, even if you live in the wilderness. So here I am, bolting the first half to the boat, and now I have something to screw to for the second half and I have a lower mount that I can attach something like a gear head and a cup holder. Now this boat has four locations that can accept these Scotty bases. So I took this package here which has a Scotty base and one of their new rod holders. This is such an easier way to do this. You just buy the thing and you bolt it on. You have to use particular bolts that you may have to then go out and buy. But aside from that, it's easy peasy. Screw it on there when it's partially deflated. Pop in your rod holder or whatever accessory you want. Again, in this case, I have an automatic style rod holder. The idea is you pop the thing in and with one hand, you can just drop a rod into it and it will self-lock using that little bar there. Now for fish bites, it won't be able to take the rod out of there. Anyways, there's all kinds of accessories. I started out with something like this bait board up here, which I thought was a little bit high and potentially in the way. The rail that comes with this boat made a little noise when I set my rod down on it. So I wrapped it in twine. Twine has a lot of little hairs in it, so I took a torch and I burnt those hairs. Being very careful not to burn a hole in my boat. I've run afoul of a, uh, an errant propane uh, torch before in the past, but oh, let's not go there. Anyways, to continue, 
with non-fire related issues. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, over here in the back of my little wilderness area, I used the tree as a rod holder, rod extension holder, and I painted them. It's nice when things match. But it's easy to do with PVC. These are going to be extensions that I add to the exocrate. It already has these pouches mounted to it, so it's pretty easy to do. Next, I secured the exocrate using some bungee. I added it. This boat does not come with these bungee straps in the back, but it does come with the little hold downs that you see on the side. Using a little shrink wrap, I covered the knot, and I was pretty much ready to go. Rigging up this boat was actually pretty easy. So was carrying it down to the water. This boat is light, easy to paddle, and now it was rigged up and ready to do some fishing. I just had to adjust the foot pedals, get them in the right position for me. Tighten up those back straps on the seat a little bit. And maybe even find some fish. Fully rigged, floating around, we're missing water. <laughs> Still floating, barely. Good thing is this boat drafts very, very little and it holds a tremendous amount. I think 650 pounds is the uh, recommended capacity for this boat. That's enormous. That's just gargantuan. It's not just that it's filled with air, but the shape of the bottom is very flat. So there's a, a tremendous amount of the boat is in the water, making a big footprint, which means that it drafts very, very little, but it can hold an awful lot. And with the skeg in the back and the front, it tracks a lot better than you would suspect a flat bottom boat would. Now I've got the boat rigged up. If I can make it out to deeper water, then I can use my anchor to hold me in case the wind gets a hold. That's the thing. This boat does have a pretty high gunnel or uh, side to the boat. So it presents a lot more to the wind because it's so light relative to a regular kayak, meaning how much is sticking out of the water. The wind can really grab you and uh, an anchor is nice. And since I can't just drill a uh, cleat into the side of the boat, I've decided to use the Scotty anchor system. It automatically locks, so this becomes the cleat and it also gets the line over the edge of the boat so there's no chafing or anything. And it uh, makes a nice um, anchor point to the boat. It's worked really, really well. And this stuff is very strong so I'm not worried about an anchor popping the side of this boat so I feel relatively confident that I can go out there I can hold myself in a spot despite the windage of this boat I just thought I'd talk about that I seem to have stopped <laughs> I may have to get out and walk no I'm still doing all right tide's coming in thank goodness Let's see if we can't uh, find out where the fishes are at just sank up to my calf. That's pretty cool. You see all the ibis out there? They're only uh, ankle deep too. Yeah. If I can get past them, all those little white spots out there, I might find some more water. You know, adventures like this are a part of the allure for me for coming out on the water. Shaking my head at myself many times. You know, kind of saying, Marty, what are you doing? Yep, I'm trying to crab walk this thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, 
Not good, I've always made it back. I seem to be in slightly more water now. <laughs> this might actually be cool if I can find just the right depth where there's a deep spot nearby and that they're fishing, I can fish that spot. This is actually a lot more comfortable to sit on than a lot of boats when you're crab walking on them. This is an amazing vantage point with nothing in front of you. Wow. This is a happy accident. I didn't plan on this. I just happened to come out someplace where there was very little water. And uh, this boat has proven to be uh, a boon, actually. Better than regular kayaks. Hmm. Who would have thunk it? I might sit up here even if I have a lot of water. Cool. See there being any issues with me fishing up here. Found ourselves a little bit more water here. Oh! Oh! Look at that. <laughs> Bunch of little jacks here. <laughs> and we're on. <laughs> uh, what do you do now, Mark? Sitting on the front of a kayak. Oh boy, oh boy. What do we got? Trout. That's a nice trout. Come here, dude. That's a nice trout. <laughs> I'd say that's dinner, <laughs> but whatever. Maybe uh, not this guy. Cool, huh? Crazy. It's been quite a while since I was in water that was so shallow I needed to sit on front of the kayak or could just do that and stop myself with my feet. It had also been a long time since I used a top water lure, which is a tremendous amount of fun. Oh. <laughs> nice. I was thinking I wanted pliers for this one, which were in the back. Now check out how stable this boat is as I crawl my way back to the sea. It's a little easier to paddle from the seat. Got my grips right where they should be. I just want a picture of you. You are pretty. It's nice, the hook just kind of fell out. Yep. How's that? Beautiful snook. Very nice. Heck you go. Top water, gotta love it. 
now that I was in slightly deeper water, I thought I might have more success using an eighth ounce jig head with a soft plastic on it. Next. Now that I know snooker here, I'm going to try to skip this under a tree. That's uh, easily done when you're standing. I got a little hole right here, a couple of them. I got some real nice casts under those trees, again and again with no reward, but you can only go to the well so many times, I think, before it comes up dry. Standing is easy. Casting, well, <laughs> that's a whole nother can of worms. Fishing from this thing is a breeze. I mean, even I can do it. I moved away from the trees to see if there was any fish cruising around past me in the deeper water. There were a lot of baby fish hanging out around here, but that's okay, they're fun to play with too. Snow? Mm -hmm. No, trout. Little guy. He's like, little, I'll show you little. or what? On, on camera, I mean. I'd like to bring home one for dinner. Oh, there's a nice one. That was a good hit. You are spunky, little guy. Yes, you are. Where I'm from, spotted sea trout only need to be 15 inches in order to invite them home for a date with a plate. So if you're hungry for fish, it's real nice to have a measuring device on board. This one is too small. Go back in the water. You're like a little Mike Tyson. Well, I must say that this kayak has surpassed my expectations. And they were pretty high ever since I first laid eyes on it over in uh, Orlando at ICAST. This boat is very comfortable under the foot, very, very stable and solid. Every once in a while I forget that I'm on an inflatable. You know, maybe I'll bounce a little bit more than you would on a hard kayak and I'm like, oh right, <laughs> that's right. I'm on an inflatable kayak. That's, uh, you know, something that's easy to forget when you're on this boat. It's got plenty of places for gear, whether it's a camera or a rod holder, plenty of room for making it your own. <clears throat> I've got my exo crate with me like I always do, which enables me to have plenty of rods. I've got two back here, I've got one up front, and I could put rod holders back here as well. I chose to put the anchor system here, but it's supposed to get warm today. I gotta get back to the pups who were up in the trailer. Where I'm at right now, I don't have electricity, so, you know, there's no AC. I've got a little fan on that runs on 12 volts, but yeah, I gotta get back to them. So, that's about that. I don't know what else to say. I mean, you've got the seat on this that you can fold up or down or any configuration in between. You can see I've added a pocket to this seat as well for my phone. That's DIY, that doesn't come with this boat. But you could do it to yours, and now you can buy one. This boat is finally available. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you guys want to help me and my channel out, you don't necessarily have to buy a boat, but Click on the link, go have a look, and tell me what you think about this inflatable, amazing fishing kayak. Thanks for coming along with me as I outfitted and fished from this inflatable fishing kayak. I'll see you next time. Why is there always a plane going over when I'm talking to the plane? <laughs>